Holy Father, we come to you tonight the most humble way that we know how, Father God. We thank you for your touch tonight, Father God. We thank you for being who you say you are and doing what you say you will do, Father God. We thank you now. We thank you now for your most gentle of mercies, Father God, and your grace allowing us to breathe in our air tonight, to allow our hearts to pump, Father God, allow our digits to move for just a few more seconds, Father God, for restoring our sight, Father God, for renewing our walk, Father God, for strengthening us, Father God, while we are weak, Father God, for your word says that when we are weak, then we are strong, Father God, because your grace is sufficient for us at our most dire times. So, Father God, all these things, Father God, that are coming against us mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, Father God, all these things seen and unseen that seem insurmountable, Father God, we're walking around these walls, Father God, we're commanding them to come down, not that we have any power of our own, but Father God, we tap into our power source that is your word, Father God, and your word says that it shall not go out void, but it will do what it says it will do, Father God, so we proclaim victory over ourselves today, Father God, over, over our selfish ways, Father God, over our flesh, over the carnal mindset that would besiege us, Father God, that would take us away, Father God, from the things of you, Father God, from the kingdom principles, Father God, so we're, we're asking for a call tonight, Father God, a, a message tonight, Father God, a move tonight, Father God, in your word, to move and shift from the message of this world, Father God, to move and to go towards the message of the kingdom tonight, Father God. We're, we're proclaiming now that you, Father God, are Lord over our lives and that we will be proficient in the things that it is that you need us to do, Father God. So we're breaking down low the assemblies and the highways, the byways, and all things in between that will come against us getting to you, Father God. For we know that it's not that you can't reach us and not that you cannot see us or hear us or desire to be with us, but Father God, our own iniquity. So Father God, we're asking first and foremost that you wash clean the things deep inside of us, Father God, seen and unseen, spoken and unspoken, Father God, that will preclude us from receiving your word tonight, Father God. We're going into the darkness and reclaiming it, Father God, with the light of the kingdom, Father God, the light onto mankind. Father God, we're proclaiming now that your word be with us, Father God, in us, through us, and with us, that we might go and get to the captives tonight, Father God, that we might hear something that would give us not only motivation, Father God, but it would equip us, it would empower us, and it would encourage us, Father God, not only that our situations and circumstances are no longer problems, but, Father God, the things of this world are subjugated up underneath the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. For your word says that you have placed all things up underneath his feet, Father God, and he is Lord over all, Father God. So, Father God, we thank you now for the shedding of the blood, Father God. We believe in that blood, Father God. And it's this blood that we proclaim over any and all situations, good, bad, and ugly, Father God, knowing that you, Father God, reign supreme. So, Father God, we come in weak and weary, Father God, almost broken, but, Father God, not destroyed, disheartened, Father God, but still with hope, Father God, because we place it all in you, and it begins with your word, Father God. Father God, we're asking that you saturate this place, Father God, wherever this place might be, for all those that are listening, Father God, all those that would dare to receive, Father God, and all those that will hear this and see this on the replay, Father God. We, we, we wrap our arms around the blood of Jesus, Father God, and we thank you for its enabling uh, 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 powers, Father God, its loving powers, Father God, its, its encouraging power, Father God. For we can do all things through, all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we give you glory, honor, and praise tonight, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're here once again and we're thankful that our Lord has given us this day. Uh, as the scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made and we are glad and we shall rejoice in it. So uh, we, we have a lot to cover uh, tonight, but that's okay. We'll, we'll go over as as our Heavenly Father allows us to go through. We ask for the anointing of the, of the Spirit to be upon us and I just believe that there are some breakthrough that will come through His Word. Um, and as we like to do, we're, we're going to recap for just a little bit of where we were, uh, where we are, and where we hope to be going in, in God's Word. So hopefully that's that's all right with everybody, and we're going to uh, allow this Word to break down some, some walls, some strongholds, some things that are uh, coming against us. And I just hope that you all receive something that's not only good to you, but good for you but allows you to go forth, uh, it allows you to go forth and share it 
Uh, I get excited when it comes to the Word of God, and I know that many of us get excited when it comes to the Word of God. And so, just like with any new thing that we get, we love to show it off. Let's show off Jesus back into this world. And we see a lot of things in the media. We, 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 we see a lot of things as we are really allegedly held hostage and captive by this whole COVID uh, famine environment. But uh, I'm encouraged by Isaiah 40 that says even uh, the youth grow weary. But it says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And in the, um, in the other translations it says those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. So let your hope, your joy, and your peace be in Him tonight as we take a little time out to deep dive into His Word tonight. And if that sounds good to you, just wherever you are in your respective place, just give Him a shout, just give Him a word of praise, uh, um, and, and, and let it feel good to you. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been, we've been transitioning really from our patriarchs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we talked about the the great significance uh, behind that trio, um, and in particular Abraham, uh, really spotting what I like to coin as the Abrahamic three, uh, which is uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, um, coming from Ishmael, uh, the seeds of Ishmael, and Isaac, right? Um, but from through through the seed, um, uh, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, would ultimately be uh, our road to redemption for all of mankind. But it specifically for us as Christians, uh, our path to salvation, because the seed that was promised, and all the promises that were given, and, 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 and Abraham's seeds uh, were birth a mighty and a great nation. But, but really, if you peel that onion back a little bit more, uh, going beyond just the Israelites, um, really that seed, which is Jesus Christ, spanning the globe um, and allowing us to be um, truly a global tribe, a global kingdom, uh, one in which our Lord Jesus Christ will come back for. Uh, but living in this church age, uh, in which one, the, the, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and, and, and really prepares us um, as the bride, um, as we await for the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, to come back. It's important for us to reflect upon not only those patriarchs, uh, but what comes subsequently from there. So, uh, as, as you remember, we talked about uh, transitioning from the one, really as God created um, Adam, the one, right? And then they would go forth, be fruitful, multiply, um, and then along with that will come some sin and so forth, the, the uh, deprivation of mankind, uh, which led to, to God taking some drastic measures, and again, rebooting with the one. Now, along with that one will always come some accoutrement, it will come with a faithful companion, of his wife in terms of Noah, his family, and, um, and the animals, the seven of the clean, two of the unclean. Uh, and again, breadcrumbs to our path of salvation there because he would give the redemptive portion of that uh, to all of, of, of creativity, right? Uh, seven of the clean, two of the unclean. So for the, for, for the righteous and for the unrighteous is what Jesus will come for, uh, that all of mankind would be saved. So he's throwing his breadcrumbs. But as soon as they get off of that ark, we seem to see the depravity of mankind again as sin continues to spread throughout, uh, ultimately leading to the Tower of Babel, which led to further depravity of mankind and God scattering mankind again. But it's really at the end of that, uh, of that engagement between God and mankind, uh, Nimrod in particular, um, in the Tower of Babel, um, that we really see the introduction of Abram. And as he pulls Abram out, he shows us how he will pull us out, separate us, right? Now that's where the encouragement comes in this, this particular season, right? He pulls them out uh, and begins to walk with them. He begins to assert that he was always their God, but now he's building that relationship so that they can build and foster that relationship with God. And, and, and he promises some things, promises a lot of things that would not even really fully manifest in Abraham's time, in Sarah's time, uh, that we're still living off of uh, the dividends, right? We, we talk about in the natural that as, as our stocks pay off dividends and so forth, uh, the return on investment for a particular portfolio and all these things, the return on investment of what God gave into Abraham, we are still living off of. And, and, and we will continue to live off of that um, as, as Jesus Christ prepares 
to come back. So, so chew on that for a little bit there. Uh, but, but as we transition from the patriarchs, as, as Jacob came back, as God told Jacob as he was exiled out of the land of which his father dwelled in, right, for, for some of his own reasons, um, he was told to go forth, again, be fruitful and multiply, right, to go off to marry, uh, be prosperous. But his natural father could have never have realized what God was calling him back into. And so as Jacob comes back in, he now has 13 offsprings, right? He has 13 children, 12 sons, one daughter. He has four wives and, and a whole uh, cast of, of servants and, and, and cattle. And, and basically his wealth had multiplied, right? Because God's hand was upon him. And so this is a very important thing as he shows uh, as he brings him back in. But there were some conditions to be met there as they would leave, or they're supposed to, leave their idols and so forth on the other side, uh, Rachel uh, and Leah and so forth, um, and, and some of their ways on the other side. But the important part is, is that God never left him, right? Uh, there were folks that meant harm to him, in, in particular, um, uh, his father-in-law, right? His, his father-in-law slash, slash uncle, right? Um, and then, then you, you take a look at that. Um, his brother uh, is, is coming towards him. So the debts of the past, along with the world being encapsulated, we, we compare and contrast that. But uh, God kept his hand upon them uh, so that they would not go through some things. And so this led us to talk about being blessed and highly favored, right? As we get into um, um, talking about Joseph. But uh, before we leave Jacob, you have to understand as he came back into the land, uh, of which was promised uh, to his ancestors and, and where he was told to go, you have to understand, in, in quick succession, he lost his beloved Rachel, uh, giving birth to his last child, um, uh, Benjamin, right? Uh, he also lost uh, Deborah, who was his, uh, his, his keeper, right? His, his, his mother's handmaid. Uh, and then he would lose Isaac, his father, right? In quick succession there. So some things would change in rapid fashion for him. And so when you look through natural eyes, as we talked about last week, when we, we look at it from the natural lens, natural lens, uh, 2020, uh, you can make the argument that that is of the world because the only reason uh, that we have this particular eyesight and the way that we see these things is of, um, is of the natural, right? It's, but it's be, be riddled and, 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 and beguiled by flesh and carnality, because that's just the way that our nature is made up because of the first Adam, right? A sinful nature. So when we look at these things from a natural standpoint, from a carnal standpoint, from a flesh standpoint, from the one of the two messages that we talked about, the messages of the world, you would say that this was all tragic, right? As, 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 as Jacob is beginning to enhance his walk in God, right? As he's believing in God and coming back, now all these things befall him. But he didn't lose faith, right? Uh, he might have still stumbled and bumbled a little bit. But Jacob, at this point, had grown past the, the, the trickery and the trickster um, that, that had really plagued him in his early childhood. Uh, similar to what Abraham uh, had endured when he was uh, going around stumbling and bumbling as Abram. And as his mother, uh, or as his wife, uh, grandmother to Jacob, would go through. But just as, as Abram, exalted father, was shifted to father of, of, of nations, all right, father of a nation, to Abraham, and, and contentious, Ben Sarah, to uh, princess, Sarah, as these name changes represented a transformation, so too with Jacob, as uh, he contends or he wrestled mm -hmm. with God, right? Uh, as Jacob is, is rebranded, uh, and transform into Israel. And this is why I really talk about uh, into, um, into really the building of the nation, right? Where we go from the one and really we start to, to span and, and some fulfillment of the promises there. And so it's, it's pretty exciting because up until this point, really, um, you, where, where you start seeing in Genesis, at the end of Genesis 11, really, really in earnest, Genesis 12, up until you get to um, uh, Genesis 37, right? 37 represents a transition there. And you, you hear, you'll still hear about Jacob a little bit, right? Up until the end of Genesis. But really the focus has a tendency to shift 
to Joseph and in particular his inner workings uh, with his brothers. Um, and for the purposes of this, I, I consider them all brothers. When, when you go through um, some of the commentaries, you go through some of the translations, and I'll talk about the half-brothers because, as we know, really, of Rachel, it was just him and Benjamin. And then the other, um, the other 11 siblings all came um, from the other three uh, wives, right? So, uh, but they were all his, his, his brothers uh, and, and sister there. But the reason, the only reason why I, I, I somewhat bring up about the half brothers uh, and, and so forth is because that, that plays a little bit of a role uh, as we find Joseph um, in his state uh, in Genesis 37. But, but, but really critical there as we, as we talked about this, this transformation, this, this road to redemption, this path to salvation, we kind of broke it down into some subdirectories and just reading over. Um, um, uh, a little bit there. We, we talked about the reward of obedience about three to four weeks ago. We talked about that reward of obedience, right? Um, and, and, and we talked about how our walk and our faith in Christ has to go beyond the carnality, right? That was that, that was one. Uh, and, and that was why we, we, we spent last week, really, in stepping back uh, and taking a look at vision and, and comparing and contrasting natural vision to our spiritual vision and how we have to shift from what is that carnal vision of what we see before us because in the natural we'll say seeing is believing but if we don't have the correct vision and the correct eyesight right and I used the, uh, the illustration of if I take off my glasses I can't necessarily see correctly I can see because uh, I'm not necessarily blind but it's going to take me a minute to get to where I need to go to, and I might not go the direction that I need to. I might stumble and bumble because I have an incorrect vision, right? But when we transition to the kingdom and to the spirit, we look beyond what is seen. So seeing isn't always believing, but believing is seeing because we walk by uh, 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 we don't walk by si uh, flesh, but we walk by sight, right? The scripture says we we walk by faith by faith. Thank you, and not by sight. So we transition from what we see naturally to what we believe supernaturally, right? Uh, it says, uh, you, you know, faith, um, without faith it is impossible to please God, right? Um, and, and faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? But, but, but James takes it a step further. He says, faith without works is what? It's dead. So, so, so again, we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, and the reason for this is because we cannot physically see God, but we have God in His Word, in His infallible Word. That's what we believe when we, when we, we raise our heart uh, to Him, when we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart uh, that God raised Him from the dead. We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, right? Uh, we, we believe in all the things that are preached and taught and exemplified in the gospel of grace, the gospel of salvation. And as a result of that, um, they don't make sense in the natural, right? They don't make sense. The whole walking by faith and not by, uh, not by sight is that transition uh, uh, from going from our carnal state, right? It says the wages of sin is death. So we're moving from that. So that is our, our altered state. And that was what we really talked about um, last week. We talked about transitioning from that uh, and getting to our original state, which is the spiritual state, which are those things that are of the kingdom. And so not focusing on the things that are of this world, but the things that are of the kingdom. Because we talked about two weeks ago about the messages of the world and the message uh, are the two messages, one of the kingdom, one of the world. And we can uh, forsake God um, to go for the things of this world, to go for the, the, all the war and all the glory and all the adulation and all these things, the exaltation and all the things of the world, right? And we can forsake God. But every man is appointed once to die, according to Scripture, right? And to be judged. But the difference is, is you can go and seek out God and have all these things, right? Uh, hence, uh, Matthew 6 and 33, seek first the kingdom of God, and all its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And what, what, what it's, it's articulating in the scripture there is that you can have all the things of God and not have God uh, and have nothing. 
But you can have nothing but God, these are my words, uh, and you have nothing but God and have it all, right? Because God has all these things. And so, you know, as, as Pastor likes to say, we broke down some religion uh, last week because we, 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 we talked about, or, or two weeks ago, I'm sorry, uh, we, we talked about that the only real reason we have need of money is because of sin, right? But I had to back that thing up in saying that, that having money and having prosperity is not necessarily a sin of itself, but placing it before your God is the sin, right? Because if you place God above all those things, Matthew 6 and 33, and if you want to go up a little bit further than that, right? He says he knows that you have need of these things before you even ask of it, right? Um, but how much more will he not give you these things, right? Because he talks about comparing and contrasting to the lilies of the field and to the birds and how, and, and how he takes care of all these things. But how much more important are we not uh, than those? So, so the fact of the matter is the kingdom principle is to seek out God first. And all these things will be added in their due season. But as we've talked about going back three weeks ago and some time, um, is that time is really of the essence to mankind. Because the, from the time that we are conceived to the time that we, we come out onto this earth, to the time we're put into the grave, we have an expiration date. Now, we don't know what that expiration date is, um, but mortality uh, is of the utmost importance to every human being that walks this earth, right? So no consequence to God because God is. He was, He is, and He will continue to be, right? So time is not necessarily of the utmost urgency to God as it is with us. So when we talk about seeing isn't always believing and believing is seeing, right? Then we have to put in that, that time factor. If God says it's going to come to pass, and this is where it comes by, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We build that faith rep, right? So where am I going with all this and, and, and taking this long way around in this recap here? So we, we, we talked about the reward of obedience. We talked about being blessed and highly favored. And the reason why we talked about being blessed and highly favored because when we talked about being blessed and highly favored, we list we list Jesus, we talked about Paul, we talked about Mary, we talked about Moses, all these folks, but they had to go through some things. We talked about Jesus, uh, and God himself said, this is my son whom I am well pleased, right? Uh, Mary, talked about Mary, blessed art thou among women, right? Uh, and Paul, he, he, he talked about, well, really, and, and, and there's a lot of points in there. You, you see Paul's conversion from Saul, and he says, Jesus tells, tells the, the, the folks, that he's going to have to suffer many things in my name. But because of that, his glory rests upon him in, in 2 Corinthians 12, in particular 9, um, uh, uh, 12 and 9 there. Um, and then Moses, right? He, he is considered uh, one, one of the, 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 the great patriarchs of our faith. Um, although he wasn't able to enter into the promised land uh, due to his own indiscretions, but God still honored him. Um, blessed, blessed and highly favored. So what does that mean? You are blessed, but because of who you are in and through Christ, you are going to go through some things, right? And so how does that tie into the time frame, right? You might not readily see the return on dividends that we talked about at the beginning of this, as I started this rant. You might not necessarily the fullness of the return on investment, but as you plant the seeds according to uh, Galatians 6, right? It says, God shall not be mocked. So as a man sows, so shall he reap, right? If you sow to the flesh, as Paul was talking about, of the flesh you beget. Hence, the two messages that we talked to. You can forsake God all you want, all right? And think that you're blessed and highly favored by the things of this world. Or you can seek out the kingdom, right? And then have all these riches, uh, the, the riches of the kingdom because he owes all these things, right? He owns those things. And so if you sow to the kingdom, you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you'll be get. And John 6 and 63 tells us that it's the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. And Romans 8, the first, really the first eight verses of Romans 8, in particular talks about that if we do not have the spirit, then you're not his, right? We're not adopted as sons and daughters of it. So, so again, Right, and, and, and really it starts off saying there, there is now no condemnation for those 
who are in Christ Jesus. And, and that is multiple fold, but of the utmost importance, where we talk about that every man is appointed once to die and to be judged. That judgment still comes upon those of us that are Christians. But the difference between those that are in the world and those that have accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ serves as our justification, right? He serves as that only suitable and acceptable lamb um, that is atoning, again, active, that is atoning for our sins. So that judgment, that condemnation does not come to us because God sees Jesus Christ and the perfection that he is um, and allows us to be able to stand in his presence. And ultimately, Jesus Christ stands as our judge, jury, and, 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 uh, and prosecutor there. So, again, you're saying, how does this all relate? Because you're hungry. You want to get into this thing. Because I took a step back last week. But I'm building this case. Because when we last left our, our man Joseph, right? And I get excited about Joseph. Joseph was considered to be blessed and highly favored. Joseph was, 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 was the second youngest out, out of all the sons, right? He, he was uh, next to last there, but yet he was highly favored by his father, Jacob, right? Uh, Joseph also gave a report on, on his siblings in terms of their infractions and the wrongdoings that they would do, right? Does this not sound like Christians? We would, we would attest to the wrongdoings of the world. We will attest uh, to, to how blessed and highly favored we are. But along the way, he received a vision, right? Uh, and and we, we talked about this vision. We talked about write the vision down, make it plain, uh, so that a hero might run with it. That's what we talked about last week when we talked about sight restored. And we talked about uh, the, the, the people perish for lack of vision, right? Uh, we, we talked about a couple other scriptures there in terms of seeing 2020. But in Habakkuk, uh, the importance of that scripture talked about that though it tarries, it will come to pass. It's me paraphrasing, right? In other words, it might take a minute for it to come, but it shall come to pass. So the importance of inscribing it on your heart, writing it down, keeping that vision uh, that comes from God. And this is where the faith portion of it comes, a la Abraham. The faith comes, a la Isaac. Uh, the faith comes, a la uh, John the Baptist, and dot, 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 Paul. All this, and you insert it into your life, right? Writing that vision down, making it plain. Because what you see in the natural is not lining up, um, or maybe it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's just me. But my Bible shows me consistently, men and women of God, that the natural did not, did not, did not line up with the supernatural. It did not line up with what God had proclaimed at first. But it's those baby steps in the faith, that transformation that allows us to see beyond, right? Uh, to being sold out for the glory of God. So when we saw Joseph, right? Um, again, blessed and highly favored. The blessed part with the tunic uh, uh, and, and, and then the, uh, the, the place of uh, uh, distinguishment um, that he had, the place of honor that he had with his father amongst all these siblings, right? There's 13 of them. So he had a place of honor. Um, and then he, he was able to go for um, and provide a little bit of correction. Uh, but then he receives the direction from God that is not received well um, by his brothers, right? But the division, uh, while it was given to, to, to Joseph, was not necessarily for a time uh, right now. And so his brothers got jealous. And so if I'm in Genesis 37, and I'm going through the first uh, uh, 12 or so verses here. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Um, he has a vision one, and then the second vision he has. And, and this is starting to cause um, his, his brothers um, to really puff up, to boil up. And so his father sends him out to go check on his brothers. And of, the, of those brothers, it wasn't all of the other um, 11. Uh, Benjamin's not really heard from, and the other nine are the brothers from the other wives, his, his half-brothers, his, uh, his other brothers, as, as commentaries and some of the other translations will tell you there. And that's, that's of, a, of, of, of a little bit of importance there, uh, because as we talked about some weeks ago, 
um, the dichotomy that would be, um, and, and you would later see this with some of the tribes, um, you know, whose mother is who and, and who has the rights of passage and some of these other things there. Uh, but again, for the purposes of this, they're still brothers. They're still of the same blood. Um, it would soon become um, part of the same nation. Um, so, so as we go through, uh, just kind of take a look at, 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 at what transpires. And so as he's going to Shechem um, to look for them, um, he leaves Hebron, goes, goes to, to Shechem. Uh, the brothers, um, uh, the, 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 the folks, uh, he's looking for the brothers and he's redirected once again. But as he's going down to find uh, the brothers, they see them from afar and they decide to, to get rid of him, right? Um, they ultimately will tear off his tunic, not unlike Jesus where his, his, his clothes are torn off on uh, a castellats. Um, they, they basically mock him for this dream. Uh, they mock him for this vision because basically what this dream, this vision would do was upset the status quo, right? Um, so ultimately Reuben comes to his senses and says, Hey, let's not kill him. Right. Um, and again, we go back to Genesis four with Cain and Abel, right? A suitable and acceptable sacrifice, um, uh, um, uh, uh, in, in one not acceptable sacrifice, and God comes be, be, before Cain and says, "You know, if you do not, if you do what is is pleasing, will you not be accepted?" And He cautions Cain in terms of letting sin crouch and fester there. Well, this is where the brothers are out. They're jealous because they don't understand because they're not providing the the suitable and acceptable things to their father, just like Cain wasn't doing. Um, uh, for his father, uh, whereas Abel did and he was accepted, whereas Joseph did and he was accepted. So now they want to kill, right? They want to kill him. But Reuben comes to the census and says, hey, let's, let's not do that. Let's sell him. Um, and so they beat him down and throw him into the well. And that's where we left off, right? And then they went and they had a meal, right? Um, so this is, this is starting at 25, Genesis 37 and, and, and 25. And it says, and they sat down and ate a meal. Uh, then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Verse 27, it says, Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. Again, this is why... I, and I acknowledge that the commentaries might give you know some some demographics there and give a little back history about some of the, the intricacies between the half brothers and so forth. But they themselves said, "Hey, this is this is this is our brother." So they come to their senses a little bit. They stopped short of killing uh, their flesh and blood, but it didn't stop them from trying to make a profit, right? So what profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him. To the Ishmaelites, um, and let not our hand be of, uh, be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. Right. So they they, they realize that like, hey, look, let us not kill him, um, and let it not his fate not be of our own doing. Although it so it is, and his brothers listen. Right. So they listen to Reuben, or they listen to Judah. I'm sorry. Uh, then the Midianite traders pass by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. All right. So as, as I was doing my studies uh, uh, last night, um, I, I would just pose this question. And I know we're not on Zoom on, on one of the chat rooms here. So um, you can say it out loud like we, like we all like to do for Jeopardy when no one's hearing us. But how many folks know how many shekels, uh, how many pieces of silver, uh, Jesus was ultimately um, betrayed for, uh, that Jews, Judas ended up receiving. All right, so if you said 36, which I think all of us said, you would be correct. So, so think about that. 20 pieces of silver is what Joseph was sold um, because of his vision, um, and, and ultimately he would receive onto him um, 
basically the nation of Israel. He would receive on to him uh, his family, um, ultimately, spoiler alert, um, and, 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 and take them out of famine and, and free them. And then they would go on into this land and prosper, right? Uh, Jesus was ultimately persecuted because he turned the status quo upside down and the people at the time couldn't receive his vision, right? Uh, and he was sold out for 36, uh, 36 pieces of silver. So that's just an aside there, uh, something that I was curious about as I compared and contrast, uh, as, as I've talked about over weeks, some of the illusions that we have, uh, the breadcrumbs, if you will, when we talk about Joseph uh, and paving the way for what we should mentally be able to see as our, as our Messiah, right? The anointed one, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So the shekels uh, of silver. So 20, um, 20 shekels of, of, of silver for Joseph, 36 uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, each betrayed um, uh, by someone that they esteemed. Uh, you know, ultimately, including Joseph, there are 12, right? If you include his sister, uh, there would be 12. He would be betrayed uh, by those closest to him. Jesus Christ would have his 12 disciples, right? Betrayed with the kiss uh, and, and, and sold out for the 36 um, shekels of silver. So just, just a little bit of, of, of an aside there. Verse 29, it says, Then Reuben returned to the pit. So remember, Reuben was like, Hey, look, let's, let's not just completely beat him down, right? And if you remember, Reuben is the oldest. He is the firstborn uh, of Leah, Right, but the first, uh, the firstborn of all the thirteen um, offsprings, all the uh, the twelve sons, and then we forget often about Dinah, right, the only daughter. Uh, so, so by all rights, he is supposed to have had the inheritance. By all rights, he is supposed to be uh, the leader. So they did this um, behind his back, right, um, and so he comes back. And, and now he's sold off. So it says, Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And then he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, um, and, and where shall I go? So in verse 31, So they took Joseph's tunic, right? This is the deception that they give to, to, to Jacob, right? Um, they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of, uh, of the goats, uh, and dipped the tunic in, in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found, we have found this. Uh, do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Right? Deception. And we'll get to that in a second here. Then, ja then Jacob tore his clothes, uh, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son's Many days, right? For a son, many days. He, he mourned for him, right? This was his beloved son, his, 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 his firstborn uh, of Rachel, um, his, his favorite son. I know we don't like to use the F word, but his favorite son there. Uh, and it says, all, And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Uh, and then in 36, it tells us a little bit more uh, about Joseph's state. It says, Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Okay, so there's a lot uh, in here, in particular, when we talk about uh, 31 on down to 36. So when we talk about 31 and them, them dipping the tunic uh, into the goat's blood and then going back and deceiving, which we see... Um, um, in 32 and in 33, uh, deceiving uh, their, their, their father Jacob. If you recall, um, and I go back to, to Galatians 6, you know, reaping and sowing, uh, or sowing and reaping, as you sow, so shall you reap, right? Jacob was known to have tricked his older brother Esau, right? They were twins, but Esau came out first. Um, and, and really three times he deceived uh, Esau, but the first two uh, deceptions are of the utmost importance. The first one, obviously, um, as, as, as Jacob is in there cooking and, and Esau comes back from, from one of his, his times at hunting, he says he's, he's famished, right? And so he wants to have some of this, this soup, this lentil soup. Um, and, and Jacob ends up um, coaxing him into uh, to giving up his birthright if he gives him 
uh, the soup. And there's a, there's a whole lot of things that we talked about, the, some of the reasons why Esau didn't want that birthright, um, but, but we'll, 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 we'll move on from that. The, the, the second part of that, the second deception is when um, Isaac thought that he was dying. And this ultimately led to Jacob being exiled. Um, uh, Isaac thought he was dying, so he's, he's calling on uh, Esau to give him um, the, the inheritance, to give him the, the blessing, right? Um, and the difference between this was is that, that while Esau didn't want the other parts of the, of the birthright, he did want the blessing in terms of some of the, the money and, the, and all the things that come along with it, um, the, the cattle and stuff like that, the, the prosperity portion of that. In other words, like a lot of Christians, we want the things of God, but we don't necessarily want the, the, the responsibilities to go along with the things of God, right? Uh, so, so Rebecca um, goes and gets Jacob and explains to him what's, what's going on and to, go, and to go get this blessing, right? So he dupes uh, his father. He deceives his father uh, by putting on some of the, um, uh, some of the, uh, the, the fur uh, because Esau is said to be, have been a hairy uh, particular individual, right? And he dupes his father, um, and then subsequently, as this is revealed, um, Esau vows to harm uh, Jacob, and so Isaac recommends uh, that, that Jacob go off uh, to the land in which his mother uh, came from. And so you fast forward here, this, uh, this sowing and this reaping, this reaping and sowing, you reap what you sow, um, and here we have it, we fast forward, Jacob continues, uh, while he is blessed, he is favored, there are some consequences from that. And so as his, uh, as his sons now deceive him in much of the same manner in which he deceived uh, his father, right? Um, and then verse 36 here, uh, we, say, we, we see here, it says, Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar. Uh, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So again, a lot uh, portrayed in here in just verse 36, whereas Egypt is where, um, you know, Joseph's great-grandfather um, would, would, would have gone off to um, with his wife, with his, his nephew, and all these things, right? And then it came back with Hagar, which he would end up eventually have Ishmael, Ishmaelites are the ones that they initially sold them to. So a lot of connections there of when we take a wrong turn, don't have the right vision, and don't have the patience to wait for God's vision to come to fruition. Again, Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk uh, 2, telling us to, though it may tarry, uh, wait for it. Wait for that vision, right? Because God, according to Isaiah 55, right, His words shall not go out void. Um, and, 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 and so forth. So it's very important there. And then the other point that I want to go, uh, Genesis 37 and 36 here, uh, not just with Egypt, but it says to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. This would be very important uh, when we talk about being blessed and highly favored. It's important because just like with his father, Jacob, uh, there are a lot of things that were set out against uh, uh, Jacob. But as you see in Genesis 28, Genesis 29, and really as we, we start transitioning uh, in Genesis uh, uh, 35, um, the Lord specifically tells Jacob that he will honor his covenant that he had with, with his grandfather and with his father, um, and he will not remove that hand from him until he's done what he says he will do. And so this is the faith that allowed Jacob, when he, when he starts to to, to his servants start to see uh, Esau and all his you know band of merry men and and, 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 and the stuff coming after him uh, this is what leads Jacob to have faith enough um, to run towards God um, and to not let go of God which which resulted in a dislocation of his hip and a transformation of his of his name um, and, and, and so forth but you see this you see this also, um, this hand being placed upon Joseph, and and, and going forward, uh, we'll skip uh, we'll skip Genesis 38. But if you turn with me to Genesis 39, we're only going to read a couple of verses, and then we'll close out. We'll close out uh, there, and then the Lord says the same. We'll continue to go on. But but I, I want to bring up the importance of that because as he was sold out into Egypt, see, a lot of us are being sold out into some things. Um, and we cannot see 
right? We, we seem to be further and further away. I mean, I, I've been there, I, and, and, I, and I'm probably still there. We, we have a hard time seeing in the natural what God has ordained in the supernatural. And this is why it's of the utmost important to get in God's Word, to stay in God's Word, um, and to continue to walk in God's Word. Because again, going back to Habet, it, it will come, it will, it might tarry, and though it tarries, it will come, and it will come to fruition, okay? So, so Genesis 39, um, really, the, um, going through uh, probably 1 through 4 here, if, if the Lord will give us, give us that time. I really want to go down to 7, but I, I think we're going, only going to make it through 4. But it says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, right? It, it's, it's establishing this position. So he didn't just go and have to, to work into the fields. And this is, this is kind of important here. Um, uh, God's hand is upon him. And as one door closes, another door continues to open for Joseph, right? Um, but Joseph never loses faith, right? It says an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph. This is the recurring theme that I continue to emphasize, right? Um, and in Romans 8 tells us that if God is for us, who can be against us? Keep that in the back of your mind as we go through Genesis 39 all the way through 50 the rest of these weeks, right? Um, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. I want you to read that again. This is, this is why I believe we're only going to get through four. I get excited about this. He was sold into bondage. But yet in bondage, he was placed with someone of affluence uh, and, 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 and someone with a certain amount of stature, right? But in verse 2, it says, Then the Lord, the Lord was with Joseph. Okay. I want us all to proclaim that the Lord was with us and assert our own name as we go into our respective places of worship, our places of, of prayer, and those quiet times in which we get into God's word. It says, the Lord was with Joseph. I'm going to say that one more time because I believe that some of us in this COVID famine are feeling there is some sort of separation there. But just like with the, the bondage that we go through in this world, as he's uh, is severing these things and, and having us cleave back onto him, he's saying the Lord was, was with Joseph, the Lord is with us. And again, Romans 8 tells us that all these things can pass away, but the love uh, of, of our Lord, our God, will not, you know, nothing will separate us from that, right? Romans 8 and 37, uh, going down to 39 there. Um, very powerful there, and we see it here. Uh, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, right? We are successful. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? And he says, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, right? Okay. I'm going to back up a little bit yeah, here, all right. right? Right. So, so the Lord was with Joseph. This is a man that had a vision. He was blessed and highly favored, right? And then he was he was booted into a well. He was beat down and thrown into a well, and then put into bondage. He was left for dead. And then, upon thinking about these things, they they wanted to make money off of him, right? This is this is a little bit like Jacob, right? Uh, Laban, as long as he was seeing. What the Lord had placed upon Jacob and was prospering because of that, then, then he was all right. Uh, but then he started to see Jacob's prosperity, and it began to not sit well with the sons uh, 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 of Laban, right? This is how we are in the world, uh, and this will ultimately what, what would become of the Israelites as they become prosperous. But uh, it says, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of the master, the Egyptian. And in verse 3 is, is powerful. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did My to God. prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. Uh, we're, we're talking about elevation here, right? As, as we talked several weeks ago about how the elevation and the harvest come hand in hand. I'm here to tell you that that even though things seem to have built up walls around you, right? Uh, uh, as they, as Joshua took them around the walls, they had faith. 
because what they saw was precluding them from getting to where they need to be. But but by faith, by faith shifting, right, from carnality and, and the things of this world to the kingdom, to that relationship that we're building, exercising that faith, they were able to achieve the harvest by just searching and seeking out and abiding in what God says, right? Uh, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask and it shall be given to you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and be my disciples, right? That's, 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 that's John 15 and 7. But it says, so Joseph found, uh, in Genesis 39 and 4, found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of this house, elevation and harvest, right? He began to be fruitful. He was elevated, and because of that, there was, there was an outflowing of things to come. And all that he had put, uh, 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 he says, and found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, he put under his, what? His authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. That's all right. Okay, okay. So we're talking yes, about God. captivity, right? Some things were done to him in the natural as a door closed, a door opened, but because he was faithful to God, he not only blessed was, was blessed, but those things around him began to prosper. That sounds like elevation, and because of that elevation, there seems to have been some harvest that was coming there. He was left for dead. Think about that for a second. He went from being favored, right, to being misconstrued, to being thrown into the well, right, and then being dragged out. He was beaten, thrown there, and then sold out. But yet prosperity is coming. Some of us are in a season. We're, 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 we're like in, 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 a, in a spin cycle. You know, you got to go through varying cycles when you put your stuff in the wash. Even, even grandma, when she might have taken stuff and manually put it in there, there are several different ways in which you had to go through in order to get that clothes, or that set of clothes clean um, before it could come out shining like new, right? So, so, so hopefully this is a word of encouragement to some folks here. And he says, then he made him overseer of, of his house and all that he put under his authority, right? So it was from the time that he had made him overseer. I know I'm reading this again, but, but faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. It says, all, right? That word all, it says, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer, over, overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Verse 6, he says, Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Right? Now Joseph was a handsome in form and appearance. And we'll leave that. Um, we'll leave off for that because um, that's a whole nother separate discussion there. But I wanted to just leave the part, the physical uh, portion of Joseph. So spiritually, he's blessed and highly favored, but naturally, he's blessed and, and highly favored. So, so as I close up this, 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 this session here, I want to leave you with a couple of nuggets here. And the reason why I read the last part uh, of, uh, of, of uh, verse 6 there, it says, Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, because when we have the anointing of God, right, the anointing of God, as that thing is placed on you, as the Holy Spirit is allowed to run rapid, and first and foremost, that comes from a willing surrender, right, uh, receiving what God has through the good, the bad, and the ugly, this thing becomes attractive, a la Laban, a la, a la the Egyptians, a la you just insert, right? The world, it's alluring and attractive to the world, right? They want the things that you have without going through the things that you have gone through. They can't understand it. And they do not necessarily want the connection that you have with your Jesus, right? And so, so as we look on the outer appearance, the world wants what you have. They want it what Joseph has. And it's so tempting and alluring. And we'll talk about this next week unless the Lord has us take a, a step back on some things. But, but the world, represented by Potiphar's wife, wants 
what the anointing of God presents without having those things. So, so many things in this world, right? Uh, you hear all the stories about, and being from 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 uh, from Florida, we hear a lot of saying the fountain of youth with Ponce de Leon, you know, and so many things that if we get the uh, um, the, the 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 cup, right? Um, um, the cup, the the, the the Christ used at the Last Supper, right? Uh, we get this chalice that you'll have everlasting life, right? Uh, but but the, truly, the belief in God and the belief in the Son of God uh, is what allows us to have these things. The belief in the way and the truth is what allows us to have the beautiful appearance when, tr quite honestly, um, we, we are some ugly things in sin. But the glory of God, um, the, 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 the blessings of God allows us to, to be presented as acceptable and beautiful in the eyesight of our Lord. So uh, hopefully um, we, we, we ran through a, a bunch of things, some things are old, uh, some concluding some things um, and, and, and closing up some doors only to open up some things. But the key nuggets to take out of here is, is Joseph never lost his faith, right? Uh, we said a couple of weeks ago there were six defining stages of Joseph. Um, we talked first uh, of the first one, the favorite son, uh, and we're transitioning into that to that faithful steward. Um, but we'll see quickly that some things change, right? And you, you'll see this as a recurring theme of some of the servants uh, of God, right? You see some things change for Moses. You see some things change for Paul. You see some things uh, uh, change for Job, and, and just just different folks that serve the Lord. But the key there is they kept their faith in God because sight unseen, right, is where the return on investment was. Because with God, we were able to recalibrate our eyesight, not seeing naturally uh, as the world does, but seeing spiritually, right? Uh, seeking first the kingdom of God. And, and if we learn nothing else from Genesis 39, uh, the first six verses, we learn that you may go through some things but when God promises that his hand will be upon us, right, uh, we do need to have endurance, just as Paul tells us in Hebrews 10, uh, that after we have done the will of God, uh, we, receive, we will receive what was promised. All right. If that sounds good to us I, 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 and good to you individually, I just ask that you, you know, wherever you are respect, uh, in your respective place of worship, that you go back. You give God a little bit of praise. Uh, you you, you, you thank Him for uh, what He has been able to do for you. Um, and just be encouraged because He is He is with us. He is, uh, he is for us. Uh, I quoted a couple of scriptures in terms of Romans 8 that if He is for us, who can be against us? And I, I strongly believe that, uh, that He's going to continue to take us uh, to where we need to be. Use this season, this COVID famine, of where we have been separated from the world to cleave back on to, uh, uh, to, 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 to affix ourselves back to the, the, the true vine, right? Uh, to cleave from the world and to affix ourselves um, um, onto the Most High God through our Lord Jesus Christ and allow His Spirit to run rampant in us. If that sounds good to you, uh, we're going to pray and we're going to close out. Um, we're going to go really first to the unsaved we're going to ask that his light be upon all of those that may or may not have uh, had an opportunity to to hear about this man named Jesus to be able to witness this light and so so as we pray for those that have fallen away or for those that may have never known the Lord uh, we also pray for us in the same way that we might be that light bearer we might put our lights on high beam, right? We might put our high beam lights on for the kingdom, knowing that the life that we save might not only be our own, but be somebody else, right? Um, and in these days, these days that are very precious to us, we're, we're, we're calling upon healing to our souls, we're calling upon uh, healing onto our natural bodies, and we're calling for corrected vision. So if that sounds good to you, I ask that you join me in prayer. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you and we thank you now for all the tidal waves of our lives, Father God, that are coming against us, Father God. We are resting assured in your server that is you, Father God. 
So, Father God, we have you at your word tonight, Father God, as we grasp hold of it, that wherever we go, we shall prosper because your hand is upon us, Father God. We're thanking you now for the blood of Jesus Christ that allows us to even come before you. Father God, we know we have no right or expectation to ask anything of you. But because of this blood, Father God, this transfusion, Father God, we know that we are able to come before you to confess our sins, to say that we are sorry, and to go before you. So, Father God, we're, we're thankful for that. We're thankful for your spirit giving us the unction, for your word says that we don't even know what to pray for. But through moans and groans, the Holy Spirit intercedes. So, Father God, we're thanking you for the intercession of the spirit tonight, Father God. We're thanking you for the advocacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father God, for this intercession, this advocacy, Father God, we're sending light into darkness, Father God, for every heart, every mind, every body and soul that does not know you, Father God. We're asking for a seed to be planted, Father God, and even as a seed has been planted, Father God, we're thanking you now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that it might come to maturation. It might come now as germination has taken place, Father God. We're glorifying your name, Father God, that, that all that all that might hear this word might receive and be glorified in your name. So, Father God, we ask that your touch be upon us tonight. We're asking for a physical healing, Father God, and we're asking for spiritual maturation, Father God, as we move beyond what is seen, Father God, to what is unseen, Father God. Now, Father God, we glorify your holy name, and we're asked that we walk uprightly in you, Father God, and we praise you for all that you are doing, all that you have done, and all that you have yet to do. So glory be to your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and be blessed.